I'd like to review with you the House of Quality, and we'll start out by looking at the first three rooms, if you want to think of it in that in that way. And those first three rooms of the House of Quality are going to be identification of our customers, and we need to think carefully about everyone in that chain uh, that's going to be involved in handling that device uh, along the way. Um, most definitely the end user who's we, who we typically think of as our customer, but there will be a lot of people in that uh, chain uh, from product design to delivering the product on the market uh, that could be our customers. So we'll want to make sure that we identify who they are. We also need to understand what each of these customers has in terms of customer requirements and rank uh, each customer, uh, provide their ranking in the context of these customer requirements and determine which customers think which customer requirements are most critical. And we'll use a scale, uh, 9, 3, and 1. And 9 means that a particular customer thinks a customer requirement we've identified is very important. A three would mean it's somewhat important, and one means it's not very important. And it's perfectly fine to use numbers between these uh, one, three, and nine values if you feel like that maybe there's something that's very important but not quite as important as uh, another requirement. Uh, so you might, for example, give that an eight as opposed to a nine, or give something that it's not very important, but you'd hate to overlook it, so uh, maybe you rank it as a 2 as opposed to a 1. And so again, uh, we're going to identify our customers, uh, what they think is um, the, the, the requirements that need to be embedded into that design and how each of those customers uh, ranks that requirement. We'll also be looking at our competitors, so we need to be doing some research and finding what uh, products, uh, processes, or devices are already available and find out how well those uh, competing products are doing meeting these customer requirements. And in the case of those competitors that are doing a very, very good job in uh, meeting a particular customer requirement, we'll want to pay attention to the specifications that they're using in order to meet that customer requirement so very well. And it's not um, bad information either to look at what they're not doing very well and looking at those specifications also to see um, how we might be able to change that in the direction of improvement as opposed to leaving it where our competitors left it. And of course we we'll want to do the same thing with the concepts that we generate in this process. And you'll notice down at the bottom there's a ranking and so we'll be able to tell with this uh, ranking which competitor, if, for example, is doing the best job meeting our customer requirements. And also, uh, this is actually a decision matrix here under these concepts, and we'll be looking at which of our concepts is doing the best job in meeting those uh, customer requirements. And again, uh, we'll be ranking uh, the customers and the competition and our concepts with this 9, 3, or 1 scale. Uh, we'll put on our engineering hats and start thinking about what we have control on what we can control in these uh, requirements uh, and start thinking in terms of design variables and design parameters and particularly those design variables, those are the things we can actually control to embed a customer requirement and control the direction of uh, the improvement of that customer requirement. Those engineering specifications will go within this particular row and we'll want to make sure that we include units and we'll want to indicate with an up or down arrow whether we want to increase something to show improvement or whether we want to reduce something in order to show improvement. And uh, just to have a simple calculation here that shows you how these numbers are actually being calculated, you don't need to provide those formulas yourself. They're being done um, way off to the far right of the uh, spreadsheet but I did want you to see where the numbers were coming from. Basically what we're doing is multiplying the engineering specification, how important the engineering specification is to a particular requirement, and multiplying it by a customer requirement. We're going to be adding all the numbers in that matrix up and then uh, dividing the sum of all the numbers in the matrix to the sum of each column. That way we can tell which engineering specifications are having the most control uh, over our designs. 
We'll also want to look at how the specifications relate to one another, uh, whether there's a strong positive impact uh, or whether there's a, a strong negative uh, impact. And so, for example, I have uh, the specification that would be in um, the trade-off six column, and I'm comparing that to the influence it might have to the trade-off in column 12. And so we can read this um, trade-off matrix by going up uh, and across to a particular specification and seeing what kind of influence, say, 6 and 12 would have on uh, one another. And um, does changing specification 6 impact specification of 12 in the correct direction? Um, if it does, then we'll have a strong positive impact there. If it doesn't, we'll have uh, maybe a strong negative impact. Or if there's not so much of an impact, then we'll rate it either as moderately positive or moderately negative. And of course, there's um, more no impact occurrences probably than any other kind of occurrence in the trade-off matrix or in the correlation matrix as this is known. So uh, again, uh, we're going to be looking at these trade-offs and specifications, but down in the benchmark data, um, we're actually going to go in and put numerical values for different specifications there from our competitives. So if column one were uh, say angular velocity, uh, maybe we're trying to get a certain amount of horsepower and, and their angular, their ranking, their, um, their design at so many horsepower, they will report their angular velocity and torque. And so uh, we would want to see what those values of torque and angular velocity are, and we would actually put the exact uh, numbers in there as opposed to some indication of something being high or low. So we'll actually put numbers here. And then of course we'll want to compare our concepts uh, to these uh, engineering specifications and particularly want to look at how they're doing relative to the competitors that already have products that could compete with the one we're designing. This is the overall picture of the house of quality. Looks a little foreboding here, but we just covered uh, every room in the house, if you want to think of it in that in that way. And let's real quick look at um, a sample problem. This came out of our textbook. And the sample problem was to design uh, a system that would enable customers to practice uh, shooting a basketball and have the ball returned for uh, a next shot or for more shooting practice. The nice thing about this design, would it would be one where the system would have a means of detecting where the shooter would move to and return the ball uh, to that area so that um, uh, they could just fire off the next shot without having to retrieve the ball on their own. Uh, here's some uh, customer requirements, the engineering specifications, the direction of improvement, uh, and then these um, rankings that show us which in which engineering specifications are controlling them. Now, in our, their, the example in the book, they used a slightly different ranking in terms of importance um, and weighting factors, but their customer requirements, and of course we're doing just a single customer here, uh, would be, in this case, uh, the customer saying it needs to be weatherproof, I want an accurate ball return, and of course we'd have to field questions there about um, what do they mean by accurate uh, toolless uh, installation just take it out of the box put it together um, they're also looking for um, um, some type of warranty a five-year lifetime quick return they want a ball returned to them quickly be able to store it in their garage and so forth you can see all the customer requirements there and then the customers have responded to the question well how important this is to you on a scale of one to five and uh, for example they've said that well waterproofing is, is is important but it's not as important as the ball not jamming um, and non-obtrusiveness in my garage isn't that important somewhat important but not um, nearly as critical as the ball not jamming and uh, um, being weatherproof. And so the engineering team takes apart these requirements and starts to look at the things that they can control in this um, system that would enable these customer requirements <clears throat> to be met and have them met in the priority of the customer. And so they've said, well, catch area, and we'll measure that in um, 
meter square and ideally we'd like to optimize we'd like to make the catch area as large as possible so you see the up area there and then we of course we want to reduce uh, the jamming probability and we'll look at that in terms of uh, percent probability uh, accuracy of the ball return we of course we want that to be higher and we'll measure that uh, in meters and so forth so they have all of the engineering characteristics and the direction of improvement listed there they've looked at the influence of each of these uh, design variables and parameters on uh, the uh, requirements and for example out here uh, they're going to choose materials that are weather resistant. That plays a very, very important role in terms of weatherproofing. And so um, that particular design parameter and that choice of weather resistant materials is going to uh, be very influential in embedding this weatherproof customer requirement. Uh, correlations, this is how changing one engineering parameter is going to impact another engineering parameter. And you can see, for example, that uh, catch area, if we compare that to uh, the average time to return right here, well, we want the catch area to be larger. We've indicated that as going up, uh, but we want the average time to return um, to go to go down and we're measuring time to return in seconds and catch area in meters square well that's a strongly positive uh, correlation because uh, we're talking about moving this up and as we increase that the time is is going to uh, si significantly um, decrease so as we move this up um, that helps us with catch area but it definitely uh, slows down the return. So it doesn't go down. It actually makes the return time uh, go up. And you can see how these other uh, parameters influence this uh, as, as well. Well, we want to look at what our competitors are doing, or this design team wanted to look at their competitors. So they found three competitors and said, well, uh, competitor number one, for example, is not doing a very good job. They're doing a poor job in making sure that their um, system is weatherproof. Um, and the other two competitors are doing OK. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the third competitor is doing a, an excellent job on uh, the quick return and so they've looked at their competition and seen how they've do they're doing with these um, customer requirements now one room that's not in our example uh, in the textbook is the uh, benchmark so we would actually go back to those competitors and see if we couldn't capture specifications with hard numbers in them that would tell us more specifically uh, what their actual specifications in terms of numerical values were. So what is the House of Quality telling us? Well, it's telling us which of our customer requirements uh, are most important to each of our customers. Uh, it's telling us which of our competitors is doing the best in meeting the requirements. Uh, note the values that the competitors are using for specific specifications that give good results. And I would even add, note those values that are not giving good results so you'll know uh, what's not going to work as well as what is going to work well. Uh, it tells us which of our concepts is doing the best in meeting customer requirements. And it's telling us which requirements have the most influence on our design. And then uh, it actually tells us which engineering specifications are controlling uh, the design to a high degree also. So it's a very powerful tool, lots of information embedded in there. Granted, there's a lot of work that goes into developing these, but the payoff is really big in terms of insight to your design.